This session, we are going to be continuing to talk about restorative chats. So here we are in our series. Um, the first thing we talked about were classroom circles. Then another session, we talked about affective language, both statements and questions. And now we're talking about restorative chats. And those of you that are familiar with um, kind of a, a multi-tiered system of support framework, we're going to talk about that but essentially a restorative chat is informal and it's a facilitated conversation using the restorative questions and you're solving a problem with a student typically. And I'll kind of talk about where that might be and when you might do that. Um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to stick in the width column. So we've, um, or the quadrant, we've talked about the social discipline window in each of our sessions. And we talk about a high role and also being highly supportive. So we have very high expectations for our students, but we're gonna help them get there. We're gonna be very firm, but fair, and we're gonna be strict, but fun. So we want to be um, not neglectful and not doing um, things for kids permissive, and we're not doing things to kids and being punitive. Instead, we're doing it with them. And the questions, the restorative questions that we ask in a restorative chat are ample of with. The other thing we talked about in the last session was we talked about every teacher has a bag of tricks. You have a continuum of consequences and manage problem behavior in your class and no one is asking you to throw those out. So you're going to do all the things that you normally do to kind of get a behavior under control, find out what's going on with the kid to meet the need. And so we brainstormed stormed earlier just some ideas of what people use. I contact the teacher, look, walking over to the student. People have a lot of things that they use. And now we have new tools like affective statements where we make an observation with a feeling and a need or a value and then making a request of the students. And we also have restorative questions that teachers can ask students at any time. They can put the side and have a heart to heart using the restorative questions. So everyone's already using a lot of things. And so this is a new tool and it's really um, the restorative chat is something when the behavior is a bit more serious, when it's really beyond what the teacher is able to manage. And um, one of the, the ideas we talked about was a two minute rule that I learned from Jeffrey Sprague from the University of Oregon. But the idea was that if you cannot successfully solve or correct a problem in a classroom or even out on guard um, on campus, um, if the student's not complying, they're escalating, they continue to be defiant. And if you get it under control within a couple minutes, then it's time to refer the problem on. And that might mean traditionally we send the kid away to the office to a new location, but it also means a different staff member involved. And that is what we're talking about today, a restorative chat where another person would come and talk to the student and prepare them then to reintegrate with you, with the teacher, um, or whoever the conflict is with. So that's kind of when you would do restorative chat. Um, and that's after you've tried all your other tricks, right? Um, so the difference really is that, um, and, and, I, and I've talked about, there's several schools that I know, particularly middle schools, high schools, where they've started this system in which instead of sending a student to pick up the phone and someone comes to them. And it's not always an administrator or a disciplinarian. It can be a campus supervisor who's trained. It can be um, a counselor with other people that will come. In fact, I have one school that's so organized that they actually have a schedule. So there's always a couple of people available each bit of the day. If someone was to call, they'd be available to come to the classroom. And they come to the classroom and they'll pull the student out and walk them through restorative questions. And what that means then is they're not out of class as long. They're not spending, you know, 45 minutes to, I've seen like three hours of kids being out of class. Um, and also it acknowledges the teacher's feelings. So often, you know, when the teacher sends a kid to the office, they never hear what happens. And they're not included in conversation. Who knows if even the right information got shared? <laughs> it's all on the, you know, the student's uh, point of view. And so the teacher doesn't have a voice don't have to just say this was hard this hurt my feelings this was disruptive or frustrating or any of that um, 
this maintains relationships because we are bringing the student back to the teacher and that's that part that needs fixing and repair. It's gonna strengthen community and um, you may actually see some behavioral change because for the student, it's immediate. Someone's gonna coach them on like, what can you try? Okay, you wanna fix it, how do you wanna fix it? Okay, can you go try it, let's go do it, right? And that helps. And then, you know, obviously it's also nice when you don't have to worry about a student who's already escalated to transition successfully across campus from their classroom to the office. And we all know terrible stories of kids that did not successfully do that. When they were already upset, they felt, they, we have stories of kids who just leave school. Why would they go face that, you know, to go to an office where people are going to be mad at them? And so it's just a better system. And I'm not sure, you know, why, why we're thinking of it now. It's not that hard. But, you know, so here we are. We're talking about setting a system like that up at your school. And then later in the end of the session, we're going to talk about what do you do when your school's not ready? What else could you do to do restorative chats? So the steps... You call for a facilitator when you reach that point, the student's not calming down. And you can still do that in a really calm, restorative way. It's not like SOS, MC, we're not yelling, you know, it's just a quick call to say, I think that John's gonna, you know, can we have a chat? John needs to have a chat. And then John is going out. You would teach the kids all this in advance so they know what's gonna happen, no surprises, you know. Facilitator arrives to the door, they call the student out, a conversation, just going over the restorative questions. And their job is to just make sure the kid is ready. And meaning ready to talk to their teacher would be they accept responsibility. So if they're still upset and feel incredibly misunderstood and this is terrible and she hates me, you would not bring him back at that point. You would, you know, and some facilitators will like walk a kid around for like 10 minutes until they're calm. But they do need to accept, yeah, I said to sit down and I said F you or whatever it was. So they do need to accept responsibility. They don't have to be sorry about it, but they need to accept responsibility before you try to reintroduce them to the classroom. So the facilitator, when the kid's ready, brings them back, asks the teacher to either step out up to the side and would walk the student through questions one and then the teachers through the other side, the other set of questions, questions two. Um, and then we also talked about if you don't have time for this, if the teacher's like, look, I, I do not have, you know, three to five minutes to spend in the hallway right now, or they have a really challenging class and they can't step aside, then you just set up a different time. So a lot of schools will like the teacher will write, I can do it during break or lunch or after and passing period or prep time or whatever. But people will do that. And teachers that are interested in having a restorative community are willing to make time for that because students that don't resolve things and don't restore with their teacher tend to continue to have problems. And people don't want that. They wanna they wanna repair and to fix the problem. So those are the steps. So the questions are, the questions that you would ask the student would be what happened? What were you thinking of at the time? What have you thought about since? Who's been affected? In what way? And what do you think you need to do to make things right? So you prepare the student, you walk around, you do that there. Now repairing harm, a lot of kids all of these questions, they need a lot of assistance. Even asking who is impacted, you might say, well, who's someone impacted? And then they can kind of get to, well, the other students or maybe my teacher. Um, and repairing arm is tricky. They won't know. So sometimes I'll say things like, because they'll just say, well, I could say I'm sorry. And if it's heartfelt, that, that's okay. Uh, it really depends on the teacher need. And because you don't know that yet, you really would be wise to help the kid generate some ideas before you start. So I sometimes say things like, well, would you like to hear what other kids have done in your situation? And then they like to hear that. And so my do something aligns to restore the relationship, like the apology. If they, if they broke something, they can fix it. If they stole something, they can replace it. Um, anytime, like if it's a little more removed, like maybe they used up a lot of teacher time and aggravation, they can do something for the teacher to give back to something that would be caring. I remember one student had a whole meltdown in the front office 
and he um, was cussing at the, this is in a middle school, cussing at all the secretaries. And I mean, they almost had to call the police. It was incredibly upsetting for the secretaries. And so the next day he did an in-house suspension, meaning he stayed at school, but didn't go to his core classes. He spent some time repairing harm. And he did things like worked in the garden and picked fruit and brought it back to the secretaries in the front office and was very sweet to them. I think he may have helped copy, make copies, stuff like that. So repairing harm, as long as it's a logical um, and the kid comes up with it even better. And if the person that was harmed is like, yeah, that would be great. Then that's restorative. Okay. So those are the ideas. You might give some ideas to the student. Then you, once they're all raring to go, ready to talk to their teacher, you bring them back, you'd go through first restorative questions one. And the reason we ask the student first all these questions and the, and the teacher listen is that, I don't know about you, but if you've ever been harmed, if you stand there and you have the person who harmed you actually take responsibility and work to make right, you calm down a little bit. It helps. It's very um, affirming to have someone do that. So we ask the, the person that did the harm first, and then you turn to the teacher and you say, well, what did you think when you realized what had happened? And what impact did this have on you and others? And what's been the hardest thing for you? And what do you think needs to happen to make things right? Now, in a typical restorative conversation, you would prepare both parties prepare and we'll talk about that in our next session when we do um, restorative kind of mediations and circles you repa you prepare everyone in this situation because it's a this is very school specific but in general you can train teachers and say hey this is how we do it this is what will happen um, these are the questions you'll answer so they're gonna know kind of how it's gonna run um, and you'll also know if this chat is not going well there's going on and we'll say Matt we're gonna we're gonna finish this another time when there's more time but in general the teachers are gonna know how to answer the questions they will have thought about it and they will have an interest in being restorative meaning they're not going to answer these with sass or rudeness like well I'm really mad and this kid needs to pay or you know none of that they're gonna be calm and then they're gonna be listening for what they really want to hear like those feelings word from the kid and find out was there something that needs to change in the class to make the student more successful That's the kind of thing the teachers listening for here and then we ask the teacher what do you think needs to happen to make it right the kids ready with some ideas and then the teachers gonna make their ask and then look at the kid and say can you do that and then that's what we're gonna do so uh, that is the restorative chat so what we do is I'm gonna read you two scenarios and then we're gonna break out into groups of three. So I'll give you those in the chat and then you'll be able to read them, look at them. So don't worry about memorizing this. But the first one is gonna be an elementary example. I actually pulled this up today, looking in your Swiss records. So this is a real one. After repeated directions started, Jason began rolling in his chair across the room. He kicked cubbies repeatedly and refused to return to his desk. Mr. Jones calls the office. The facilitator comes to the door to, to facilitate a restorative chat. So you have a very escalated kid and he's not calming down. Okay, so that's scenario one. Scenario two, this is a, a middle or high school. Tim walks into class with a t-shirt with a naked woman on it. Miss Jones gives him a choice. You can go to your PE locker and get a different shirt or you can turn it inside out. I'm gonna give you a minute to decide. So Tim yells back, you can't dictate what I you at all, except he says the full thing, right? So Miss Jones calls the office and a facilitator comes to the door to facilitate restorative chat. So then you have person one is gonna be the facilitator, person two is the student, and person three is the teacher. So remember steps before I release you. You call, the facilitator comes to the door, pull the student out. So the first conversation is actually facilitator students. And then when they're ready and they can answer them like contritely and honestly, then you bring a teacher and you kind of start over again. Question one and question two. Okay. So that is how that's going to roll. And um, 
when we um, come back, we're going to just talk about how that felt. Facilitator used questions once, one to, to prepare the student, the student you asked the questions. Please be um, reasonable, right, students? Those of you acting, don't be like, you know, crazy. Be like able to talk. Otherwise, we'll never get there right today. And then you ask student one, uh, the student questions one, and the teacher gets questions two. So we're coming back now after trying out a restorative chat with a facilitator, a student, and a teacher. The restorative practices folks really are proponents of just reading it and being, there's a certain justice in that. Um, and not to ad lib, like Louise said, you just stick to the script. It works, you don't have to add it, but obviously there's, you may need to get some clarification or help the kid, particularly in the prep phase. You may need to ask a follow-up question to clarity because your job in the preparation before you bring them back is to help them be coherent when they talk to their teacher so it doesn't take a long time. So, you're, so that's, that's really to say. Uh, we had one more facilitator, Shannon, I think. Um, I really, I love having this script um, and it is kind of hard to stick to the script, but um, I definitely, the questions, I just, they're so succinct and, and really get to all the good parts of the conversation that you need to have. So. Excellent. Uh, do we have a couple students that really got into their role and can talk about how it felt to answer the questions? I can talk about it. This is Eileen. Um, I, it was really hard to understand how a it was really hard to switch roles, let's put it that way, and to see things through their lens, like why they might be misbehaving. So that was very interesting, to come up with a reason why the student was rolling around in the chair and kicking the cubbies. So it just kind of yeah. gave me a little more insight, I believe, as to what could trigger that behavior. I like it. Kind of had to put your behaviorist hat on a little bit and right. think about what went to that. <laughs> exactly. That's, that doesn't hurt us to practice those muscles. It's valuable stuff. <laughs> uh, who else was a student? Uh, I was, and it was it was tricky. I think too, just putting on that different hat. Um, and I guess I just questioned like my responses. I was trying to be cooperative, and I don't. Sometimes I think realistically, some students just in the heat of the moment aren't as cooperative initially, and so I was having a hard time being mm -hmm. realistic. I guess with some of the answers. Right. Yeah. Well, the, you know, some kids need a minute, you know, like a walk before they can answer these, but they get, there. I mean, really, I, I think of a few kids that don't respond to this, you know, I mean, and it's like special situation. So yeah, it's pretty universally effective, but people have calm and able to put a couple thoughts together <laughs> before they can answer. Okay. Let's couple teachers, couple people to say, what was it like? I thought it was great to be um, to be able to be the teacher because I'm often the facilitator and to see it from the teacher's lens like, wow, I did a lot of work in prepping this lesson and then these kids kind of wrecked my, my, my plan. Um, but I also really appreciated the way, so Dora, because you can have the questions as a script, but the way you ask them is also important. Not like, okay, here's question one, here's question two, you know. And she was really listening and um, facilitating that conversation, which was, I, I was really helpful to, to hear somebody else go through those questions. Yeah, it's good to see the other side. Good. Uh, Peggy yeah, um, and Louise. <laughs> I also, like Lisa, I'm usually the one that's facilitator. And I, and I, I greatly appreciate it because I'm trying to, you know, putting myself in real life and how, um, when it's when they come to you to help resolve the problem, then you're still part of the uh, of that. And so, um, as a teacher, I know I would really appreciate that part. And um, and on the process of helping to resolve it, and not just you know seeking out punishment or you're in trouble, you need to go. Um, it, it did really, truly feel restorative, which I can't think of another word. So as a teacher, I, I, I appreciate it and I appreciate it because I like the teamwork. So I liked that someone else came and while I could still teach in, um, 
and and asked the questions and and um, helped the student. So I think that helps also dissipate the anger. Not every school is going to have the capacity even the initiative to kind of start this system. So I thought up a few other things. I experienced, we rolled this out in my school district in Napa. Um, so some ways we did it was, sometimes we just started with like a couple kids. Um, and the principal would say, you know, for Johnny and for Jason, just instead of sending them up, just give me a call and I'll come. <laughs> That's literally how it started. And then it became more of a school-wide effort. Sometimes you could even, if you don't have even, you're a teacher and you don't have the principal on board, what does that kid connect with? Are they available to, to come? Um, we have amazing campus supervisors that kids can connect with or um, a custodian. Or, I mean, it's nobody's out of bounds from relationships. This is a community. So you can start with a couple kids and see how it goes. And um, the other thing that people have been doing forever, some sort of reflection desk in the classroom where a student um, can go to calm down or refocus. The key here is that when they go to that location, they're going to answer the sort of question. They're going to have like a little place where they can draw on the box, you know, what happened and or, you know, who was, who was hurt and how do we fix it? or the full questions that you have for older kids. Um, and they can reflect on the desk. But I think the key to having a reflection desk, if it's going to be restorative, you have to have some components. One of them is you need to teach all of the students that are available to end them at any time when they need like to focus better, or they want to alone, or they need quiet time. And you have to actually act like that as a teacher. So you're like, you know, trying to encourage kids like, oh, Annalise, would you work better at the desk? I can see that they're ready right now. And I understand, you know, and you kind of like make it so all the kids can use it to do when they're ready. And then you guys go work it out. So you could do that. Um, other schools do buddy classroom systems where the student will go to like their next door classroom or end of the teachers where they're both kind of restorative and into this and could go to that class and could re um, kind of sit. They already know where they're going to go. They sit there. They complete the restorative questions. And then their buddy class teacher would go over it with them as prep work, and then they come back. Or um, the kid just comes back with the completed form, and then the teacher and the kid do it together. And then the last one is just in general, you just hold a restorative chat with a facilitator. And a lot of people do this. And the thing is they have the questions posted up, usually right outside the door where they can step outside, calm conversation. Obviously, this isn't going to work if the kid's really escalated, right? Um, so they do that question. So, you know, how do you do that, though? It's really tricky. So the main thing that you need to do is you need to teach your students in advance what to do when there's any kind of crisis or emergency or you just need to talk to someone. Um, for younger kids, um, there's a strategy in PBIS called the concentration game where you can actually teach them, make a game out of it, like get them to focus, you know, everyone pull out your book, and then you try to distract them, and if they don't look up, they get points, and you say, okay, you guys made it for a minute, let's try two minutes, and that's a great strategy. And then with older kids, I just say, everyone should have an opportunity to talk to me privately if they need to. So what I need to do when someone talked to me or I need to talk to them, we're going to step over here and your job is to read a book and just, you know, or whatever task you want them to do and, and respect people's privacy because we all want that. And kids or teens are very much into that. And then um, when the moment you cue them, um, you know, privacy time or concentration game, whatever you're going to say, and you first reinforce kids that are on task. They're doing group work. Thank you for being on task. Thank you. Okay. All right, Jason Lathark, right? So you get them all, so you lose your audience. Because if you have an audience, this is not going to ever, ever, ever work. <laughs> um, then privately, you ask the questions, restorative questions one, and you listen. The teacher needs to listen and be open, listen for those feelings, the views, needs, and is there a part you played? And there's a certain humility to being a restorative teacher that you're really listening to, what do we need to fix here, we fix, 
to make this important for everyone. And this is why it's so important with your affective language, those things that you really talk in an, in an affective way, you know, on it that it hurt your feelings because you worked really hard on that lesson and really value this student. Jason is important to you and you care about him. It's hard to see him struggling, you know? Like that's okay in these kind of conversations to say those honest feelings in a professional way. So this is kind of options that you can, and, and it's not either or. I mean, you could try all of these things at your school to really avoid sending kids away from your school, classroom, community, and keep them in it restore at the same time. 